I'll be interested to know what you think in the comments. Do you think it was Max's fault? Do you think it was Lewis's fault? Hi there guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Join me once again in my Mark 7 Golf R to talk about the Formula 1 Grand Prix. To talk about Max Verstappen versus Lewis Hamilton and that incident that happened yesterday. Um, I'm recording this on Monday morning. This is all like 7am. <laughs> um, just to kind of give you an idea. Also to kind of reflect on kind of the whole weekend and how the sprint format kind of worked i was there on the friday if you haven't seen that check out yesterday's vlog um yeah it will be useful to you but yeah talk a little bit about f1 particularly from a fan's perspective you can obviously get quite a lot of feedback from like sky f1 and channel 4 if you're in the uk or just like other media outlets i hope this gives you uh just yeah just an idea from a normal fan who's sort of watching in the stands watching on tv and yeah and hopefully you enjoy the video so let's get straight into this one yes welcome back to another video i hope everyone is all well let's get straight into the actual weekend and the actual format so if you're not familiar this f1 format was changed to a sprint weekend that meant that on the friday you got one practice session one qualifying session on the saturday saturday you then got one practice session and one sprint race <laughs> which was actually the official qualifying and then on sunday you got the normal race now that kind of changed things up and mixed things up for me personally from a fan's perspective i managed to get tickets for the friday i've been to silverstone quite a few times in the past for either the full weekend or just for specific days whether it's been race day or the saturday or the sunday or, or whatever it is on the friday i really really enjoyed it it was great to see people back again um, yeah i hope you enjoyed that vlog anyway and the qualifying was really really exciting particularly watching hamilton watching the cars absolutely push it and i think unless you're actually there in person seeing those cars you know you have no idea how quick they can go and quickly then get up to speed and quickly they can decelerate as well with those carbon brakes and i'm going to touch on that a little bit talking about the max verstappen and the hamilton incident that happened yesterday so overall I was quite a fan of it, um, you know, from a, honestly, from a fan's perspective, just watching from the stands, um, I enjoyed the Friday session, you know, take the day off work, you then got two days to kind of chill out as well. And it felt like it still meant something, you know, at the end of the day, it still put you on pole for that sprint race, it still gave you that best possible chance to then finish, start the race on pole from the Sunday. So it was quite good, and obviously being a bit of a Hamilton fan, it was great to see him win and to see Norris and Russell do well as well was fantastic. So overall, for the actual sprint race, from my perspective, from a Friday, I really, really enjoyed it. I then watched the Saturday and Sunday's action on TV, and it was also pretty enjoyable as well. I'll be honest, the sprint race felt a little bit flat. Um, you know, there was a lot of decent overtaking from like Alonso, which was a bit exciting. I didn't really understand why the practice session was sort of after a qualifying. It was a little bit weird on that perspective. Um, and I guess if I was there, I would have felt a little bit shortchanged just because on, on the Friday you get like a proper full day, you know, qualifying didn't start till six o'clock. So you're not finishing until seven sort of quarter past seven in the evening. You know, it's a long day. You are really getting your money's worth. And I really enjoyed that. You know, you get more time, more track action, um, lots of things to do. You know, hopefully that vlog again has kind of demonstrated that as for the race. Well, yeah. It was a it was a great race and again there was nothing really else to say about that other than to be honest in terms of the format because it was exactly the same it started a little bit later in the day um i suppose the main difference was it obviously mixed up the grid a little bit from the sprint race um we wouldn't have necessarily had that sort of first lap incident if things didn't happen so that's my kind of reflection and hopefully you found it useful from a sort of a fan's perspective check out that vlog if you haven't already seen it now let's get on to max verstappen versus Lewis Hamilton because it was a huge talking point and I think the one thing that I want to say is actually if that crash that incident didn't happen I still think it would have been an exciting weekend I think there was plenty of action particularly on Sunday there was lots going on there was lots to enjoy lots to watch and that was obviously great to see whereas normally in some sort of events or entertaining stuff or whatever at the end of the day we just want to be entertained crashes are the thing that kind of make it whereas for this one I actually think there was a lot of other stuff to talk about not just the crash but let's talk about it anyway so I've sort of reflected on it and when it I was watching it live and when it happened, I was sort of like, oh, you know, I don't know. I need I need to see a replay. And as soon as you saw the first replay after, you know, Max Verstappen was seemingly OK. You know, he was transported to Northampton Hospital, I believe. And yeah, he seems to be OK if, it, you know, a bit shaken, which, you know, is fantastic news to see. You know, no one wants to see anyone get hurt at the end of the day. And it's a very high speed corner. And I was sort of cringing when it happened because, you know, I've been around that track a few times myself, whether it's not driving. I've been to Silverstone so many times. You know, if you follow my channel, you know how many times I've been to Silverstone as well. And I don't show every time I go there either. So 
I know it pretty well. When I saw the replay first time, I was sort of like, I think that's Lewis's fault. I felt when you're coming on the inside, from my perspective, from a fan's perspective, you have more visibility of seeing what's going on at the end of the day. You know, I stand by, you know, Formula One cars, it's very hard to see out of, you know, small mirrors, all this kind of stuff. But they're, you know, top world class drivers, so, you know, they should have pretty good perception. So it was probably more in for Lewis's favour to back out. But I think in terms of the actual championship, Lewis knew I can't keep backing out of moves. You know, it was already getting a little bit, you know, too close for comfort sort of leading up to that. A few banging wheels, a few sort of like aggressive moves potentially from Max. That certainly was from Lewis's perspective. It was quite clear that Max did see Lewis, but he saw him quite late. And... You know, at the end of the day, it was unfortunate that, you know, none of them, maybe they're both too stubborn in some ways. They both didn't back out. And that is just what happens. It could have ended up either way. You know, at the end of the day, you would actually expect kind of the rear of the car to be kind of more sturdy. So Lewis wouldn't really want his front end to get hit because you're more likely to get the front sort of taken out quite hard. And, you know, the rear might survive. But in this case, the rear just completely buckled and the wheel actually fell off, which was really surprising. And then obviously the huge crash then, that then happened afterwards. That was kind of like my initial thoughts. The more I kept watching kind of a few replays, kept sort of getting the analysis from other sort of professionals, other F1 drivers, other sort of like um, like from Sky F1, they do, you know, Kroon Shandok gives sort of like a great overview of what his kind of perspective was. And I think he really sort of laid it down to me in the sense that it was the build up before the crash that sort of made it for me. Well, for him anyway, was that, how much Lewis was being squeezed initially before the corner. Because you've got to think, everything for any car, any corner, it's the angle of attack that gets you the most speed at the end of the day. You want to be on the racing line, you want to be getting that maximum acceleration out of that. Particularly when you're leading up to those you know, sweeping corners onto hangar straight, you're going to want as much speed as you can, whether you're fighting someone or not. That, that You just know it as a driver. There's no point of just getting ahead and then having no speed to then kind of kick on. Lewis was squeezed right against the wall. He had a car's whip, but he was squeezed against the wall, which meant his angle of attack was never going to be as good. And as a result, he was never he was going to struggle to make the apex. It was tricky. Jensen Button said as well, he felt it was more probably on Lewis. You know, he knew that corner. Again, these guys know, know their corners. Probably Lewis knew it as well, knew he was taking a chance. But he did have, in some ways, less to lose. He wanted to take that risk. So he was kind of always going to take it. Whereas Max, I just felt, you know, so far clear in the championship, even if he did get past and he wasn't as aggressive as he probably could have been, um, you know, the chances are the Red Bulls look pretty strong. He could have probably got Lewis again, or he could have got a solid second, which probably, you know, the fact that he got three points from that sprint race, probably a point for fastest lap, you know, a few points lost from the actual thing, finishing second to first, I don't think it would have been the end of the world. So I think the bigger picture should have been more personally on Max's head. Was it kind of like a racing incident? It's it's so tough, and you know, from a fan's view, you you want to see some moves, you want to see some overtaking, but you want them both to be fair. You know, you don't want to see cars just flying off and then drivers getting seriously injured or even worse. You know, that that's not something that you want as a fan because you know these guys are superstars. You know, they're driving the fastest cars ever, and I, I stand by the fact that through the corners, when you're standing there on track and you're seeing these cars, it sort of defeats your mind, it defeats your logic how quick they're going. You will never get that picture from watching on TV. That's one thing I will guarantee you. Until you're sitting there and you're watching it, it's incredible the cornering speed that they can take. So, you know, they're heading into that corner 175 miles an hour. They're still taking it pretty flat at the end of the day. And, that, and that's the crazy thing with very little braking. I mean, you can see how hard Max Verstappen hit the wall, so that was that was the main thing. Overall, I think you know having a night to kind of think about it and seeing all the rev all the views, the penalty probably was fair. You know, at the end of the day, the stewards know what they're talking about. You know, they're the experts; they know the rules, and you know you got to follow the rule book at the end of the day. At the same time, I can see both drivers' perspective from Lewis's side to sort of say, well, actually, you know, it was a fifty-fifty. I went for it; he went for it. You know, it was disappointing how it turned out. You know, if at the end of the day, Max had a small spin and was able to carry on, would it have been a bigger deal? I don't know. Um, you know, there were some interesting comments from Christian Horner. I, you know, you think it's the heat at the moment, but these guys are clever, smart guys. I think they know what they're saying. And, you know, he said a few things which I, I wouldn't necessarily agree on. You know, you look over the whole of Lewis's career, he's never really gone out to really do any sort of aggressive moves, to be honest with you. It's just how I've kind of seen it. 
from watching him. And Max said it was disrespectful to celebrate. Well, actually, with everything that's gone on, you know, in the UK as well, we're still technically in lockdown. Um, if you're not from the UK and you're watching this, and to just go to that event was surreal. You know, I was so so pleased just to be there, and I'm sure it was fantastic for the fans on Sunday. You know, to see people sort of celebrating. You know. And just enjoying the moment was the main thing. And obviously, you want Max to be okay, but he, you know, he did walk out. He was okay. Obviously, if there was anything more serious, you know, it would completely have muted anything. And Lewis wasn't even informed that it, you know he was going to hospital. So you can't take those things away. So I kind of disagree with it. Um, at the same time, from from Max's view, I think there, you know, <laughs> you look at a driver's age. Max in 10 years time come to 2031 if he's in a similar situation in the championship I think he makes a different type of decision and then again if you look at Lewis put him 10 15 years back in his career would he have done something different would he you know would he have been even more aggressive at the start I don't know it's just where they were at in their head and like everyone else has said I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner you know we're nearly halfway through the season both cars are very very quick both cars are very very similar um, both drivers are clearly exceptional and experienced. You know, Max is younger, but he has had plenty of experience. Lewis is obviously a bit older, but he has had even more experience. Um, so they know what they're doing, and they're gonna they're, they're gonna clash. It's just inevitable. It's gonna clash. Really disappointed how it turned out. But I, from my personal view, I think it was fair. I I, I don't think you could have gone that's a racing instant. To be honest with you. Um, I think it was from Lewis's field of vision to potentially have backed out of it. But then when you see at the end of the race, the way he took Charles Leclerc in the exact same incident, Charles ran wide and gave him room. Now, if Charles actually stayed, you know, Leclerc stayed on the track, he would have retained that position and he would have had quite a decent amount of momentum coming out of it. But he just had to go a little touch wide. Um, Max could have also done that. That that was an option for Max, you know, it, it just was but then again Ferrari to Mercedes there's such a speed difference you know he knew he was going to get overtaken he knew the lap times when Hamilton was coming to him with Verstappen there isn't it's very very small and it's very very hard to overtake on that track particularly with the downforce that the Red Bull had around the corners and um, it didn't matter that Hamilton was fast on the straights if you can't get near him it doesn't make a difference so all those things combined that's kind of where I'm at 10 second penalty, you know, it did affect Hamilton quite a lot, but Verstappen was the biggest loser out of it all. I think it was fair, but I'm interested to know what you think. And this is just me coming from a fan's view, looking at the footage, looking at from actually being there on track. I'll be interested to know what other people think about it. Um, but yeah, from my side, I think it was fair. It's going to be interesting to see how it all handles and how it all goes about. But the biggest thing from my perspective was it just made people particularly in this country in the uk just have a bit of smile on their face you know us you know friday was fantastic and friday and formula one can sometimes be pretty boring i'll be blunt um but being quite a car enthusiast and seeing these guys you know the fastest machinery they're so so quick so so quick and it obviously takes so much skill to sort of be so delicate with them particularly in sort of like a race heat heat at the moment battle I'll be interested to know what you think in the comments. Do you think it was Max's fault? Do you think it was Lewis's fault? Did you think the Sprint F1 Grand Prix worked? And those are the things that I think other people would find useful, particularly if you're looking to spend the money. It's not exactly massively cheap to go there. I went there for Friday general admission, but you can obviously do grandstands. You can do the full weekend. You can camp there. Um, you could do VIP. There's, you know, the possibilities are endless and the price could go into the thousands quite easily. So I'm really interested to know from your whole perspective, particularly from you guys, you know, it is a community channel that I've always built up on here. So I'm always interested from the fans view, not just from you know necessarily commentators you know it's good to get their ideas but your ideas i think are really useful and you know what if you guys enjoy it and you do get involved you do like the video you do share you do subscribe and um, i'll certainly do more f1 content in the future and i've got a little bit more to come as well coming up so yes thank you so much for watching hope you have a fantastic rest of your day enjoy the rest of your week and i'll see you again next time cheers guys